In logic, the law of excluded middle is the third of the three classic laws of thought. It states that for any proposition, either that proposition is true, or its negation is true. The law is also known as the law of the excluded third, in Latin principium tertiae exclusi. Yet another Latin designation for this law is tertium non data. No third is given. The earliest known formulation is Aristotle's principle of non-contradiction, first proposed in On Interpretation where he says that of two contradictory propositions one must be true, and the other false. He also states it as a principle in the Metaphysics Book 3, saying that it is necessary in every case to affirm or deny, and that it is impossible that there should be anything between the two parts of a contradiction. The principle was stated as a theorem of propositional logic by Russell and Whitehead in Principia Mathematica as the principle should not be confused with the semantical principle of bivalence, which states that every proposition is either true or false. Classic laws are thought. The principle of excluded middle, along with its complement, the law of contradiction, are correlates of the law of identity. Analogous laws. Some systems of logic have different but analogous laws. For some finite n-valued logics, there is an analogous law called the law of excluded n plus 1 th. If negation is cyclic and is of max operator, then the law can be expressed in the object language by where tilde tilde represents n minus 1 negation signs and n minus 1 disjunction signs. It is easy to check that the sentence must receive at least one of the n truth values. Other systems reject the law entirely. Examples. For example, if P is the proposition, Socrates is mortal, then the law of excluded middle holds that the logical disjunction, either Socrates is mortal, or it is not the case that Socrates is mortal, is true by virtue of its form alone, that is, the middle position, that Socrates is neither mortal nor not mortal, is excluded by logic and therefore either the first possibility or its negation must be true. An example of an argument that depends on the law of excluded middle follows. We seek to prove that there exist two irrational numbers and such that is rational. It is known that is irrational. Consider the number. Clearly this number is either rational or irrational. If it is rational, the proof is complete, and an. But if is irrational, then let an. Then, and two is certainly rational. This concludes the proof. In the above argument, the assertion, this number is either rational or irrational, invokes the law of excluded middle. An intuitionist, for example, would not accept this argument without further support for that statement. This might come in the form of a proof that the number in question is in fact irrational, or a finite algorithm that could determine whether the number is rational. The law in non-constructive proofs over the infinite the above proof is an example of a non-constructive proof disallowed by intuitionists. The proof is non-constructive because it doesn't give specific numbers and that satisfy the theorem but only two separate possibilities, one of which must work. By non-constructive, Davis means that a proof that there are actually a mathematic entities satisfying certain conditions would have to provide a method to exhibit explicitly the entities in question. Such proofs presume the existence of a totality that is complete, a notion disallowed by intuitionists when extended to the infinite, for them the infinite can never be completed. In classical mathematics there occur non-constructive or indirect existence proofs, which intuitionists do not accept. For example, to prove there exists an n such that p, the classical mathematician may deduce a contradiction from the assumption for all n, not p. Under both the classical and the intuitionistic logic, by reductio ad absurdum this gives not for all n, not p. The classical logic allows this result to be transformed into there exists an n such that p, but not in general the intuitionistic. 
the classical meaning, that somewhere in the completed infinite totality of the natural numbers there occurs an end such that p is not available to him, since he does not conceive the natural numbers as a completed totality. Indeed, Hilbert and Brouwer both give examples of the law of excluded middle extended to the infinite. Hilbert's example, the assertion that either there are only finitely many prime numbers or there are infinitely many, and Brouwer's, every mathematical species is either finite or infinite. In general, intuitionists allow the use of the law of excluded middle when it is confined to discourse over finite collections, but not when it is used in discourse over infinite sets. Thus intuitionists absolutely disallow the blanket assertion, for all propositions p concerning infinite sets d, p or tilde p. For more about the conflict between the intuitionists and the formalists see Foundations of Mathematics and Intuitionism. Putative counterexamples to the law of excluded middle include the Lyre paradox or Quine's paradox. Certain resolutions of these paradoxes, particularly Graham Priest's dialetheism is formalized in LP, have the law of excluded middle as a theorem, but resolve out the liar as both true and false. In this way, the law of excluded middle is true, but because truth itself, and therefore disjunction, is not exclusive, it says next to nothing if one of the disjuncts is paradoxical, or both true and false. History Aristotle Aristotle wrote that ambiguity can arise from the use of ambiguous names, but cannot exist in the facts themselves. It is impossible, then, that being a man, should mean precisely, not being a man. If man, not only signifies something about one subject but also has one significance, and it will not be possible to be and not to be the same thing, except in virtue of an ambiguity, just as if one whom we call man, and others were to call, not man, but the point in question is not this whether the same thing can at the same time be and not be a man in name, but whether it can be in fact. GBWW8, 525 to 526. Aristotle's assertion that, it will not be possible to be and not to be the same thing, which would be written in propositional logic as, is a statement modern logicians could call the law of excluded middle, as distribution of the negation of Aristotle's assertion makes them equivalent. Regardless that the former claims that no statement is both true and false, while the latter requires that any statement is either true or false. However, Aristotle also writes, since it is impossible that contradictories should be at the same time true of the same thing, obviously contraries also cannot belong at the same time to the same thing. In the context of Aristotle's traditional logic, this is a remarkably precise statement of the law of excluded middle, pp. Leibniz's its usual form, every judgment is either true or false, footnote 9, footnote 9. This is Leibniz's very simple formulation, Bertrand Russell and Principia Mathematica Bertrand Russell asserts a distinction between the law of excluded middle and the law of non-contradiction. In the Problems of Philosophy, he cites three laws of thought as more or less self-evident or a priori in the sense of Aristotle. 1. Law of Identity. Whatever is, is. 2. Law of Non-Contradiction. Nothing can both be and not be. 3. Law of Excluded Middle. Everything must either be or not be. These three laws are samples of self-evident logical principles. It is correct, at least for bivalent logic, i.e., it can be seen with a Carnot map, that Russell's law removes the middle of the inclusive or used in his law. And this is the point of Reichenbach's demonstration that some believe the exclusive or should take the place of the inclusive or. About this issue Reichenbach observes. The tertium non data 29, f tilde f is not exhaustive in its major terms and is therefore an inflated formula. This fact may perhaps explain why some people consider it unreasonable to write with the inclusive or, and want to have it written with the sign of the exclusive or, 30, f tilde f, where the symbol signifies exclusive or in which form it would be fully exhaustive and therefore nomological in the narrower sense. 
in line the means for all or for every, a form used by Russell and Reichenbach. Today the symbolism is usually x. Thus an example of the expression would look like this. Tilde flies. A formal definition from Principia Mathematica. Principia Mathematica defines the law of excluded middle formally. 2.1 Tilde pp. Example. Either it is true that this is red, or it is true that this is not red. Hence it is true that this is red or this is not red. So just what is truth and falsehood? At the opening PM quickly announces some definitions. Truth values. The truth values of a proposition is truth if it is true and falsehood if it is false. Asterisk, asterisk, this phrase is due to Frege. The truth value of PQ is truth if the truth value of either P or Q is truth, and is falsehood otherwise. That of tilde P is the opposite of that of P. This is not much help. But later, in a much deeper discussion, PM defines truth and falsehood in terms of a relationship between the A and the B and the percipient. For example, this A is B really means object A is a sense datum and red is a sense datum, and they stand in relation to one another and in relation to I. Thus what we really mean is I perceive that this object A is red, and this is an undeniable by third party truth. PM further defines a distinction between a sense datum and a sensation. That is, when we judge this is red, what occurs is a relation of three terms, the mind, and this, and red. On the other hand, when we perceive the redness of this, there is a relation of two terms namely the mind and the complex object, the redness of this. Russell reiterated his distinction between sense datum and sensation in his book The Problems of Philosophy published at the same time as PM. Let us give the name of sense data to the things that are immediately known in sensation. Such things as colors, sounds, smells, hardnesses, roughnesses, and so on. We shall give the name of sensation to the experience of being immediately aware of these things. The color itself is a sense datum, not a sensation. Russell further described his reasoning behind his definitions of truth and falsehood in the same book. Consequences of the Law of Excluded Middle in Principia Mathematica From the Law of Excluded Middle, Formula 2.1 in Principia Mathematica, Whitehead and Russell derive some of the most powerful tools in the logician's argumentation toolkit. 2.1 tilde pp, this is the Law of Excluded Middle. The proof of 2.1 is roughly as follows. Primitive idea, 1.08 defines PQ equals tilde PQ. Substituting P for Q in this rule yields PP equals tilde PP. Since PP is true, then tilde PP must be true. 2.11 P tilde P 2.12 P tilde 2.13 P tilde tilde 2.14 tilde P 2.15 2.16 2.17 2.18 P Most of these theorems, in particular 2.1 2.11 and 2.14 are rejected by intuitionism. These tools are recast into another form that Kolmogorov of cites as Hilbert's four axioms of implication and Hilbert's two axioms of negation. Propositions 2.12 and 2.14 double negation. The intuitionist writing of L. E. J. Brouwer referred to what he calls the principle of the reciprocity of the multiple species, that is, the principle that for every system the correctness of a property follows from the impossibility of the impossibility of this property. This principle is commonly called the principle of double negation. From the law of excluded middle, PM derives principle 2.12 immediately. We substitute tilde P for P in 2.11 to yield tilde P tilde, and by the definition of implication then tilde P tilde equals P tilde. QED use in computer science proofs. The law of excluded middle can be used to prove the decidability of certain computational problems. 
Usually, decidability is proved by showing an algorithm that solves the problem. However, in some cases it is possible to prove that a problem is decidable without showing an algorithm that solves it. For example, consider the following constant function f. By the law of excluded middle, Goldbach's conjecture is either true or false. If it is true then f is 1, and the required algorithm is just print 1. If it is false then the required algorithm is just print 0. In either case, there is a simple, one-line algorithm that prints f, so by definition, f is computationally decidable. It is true that we don't know which algorithm to use, but we do know that an algorithm exists. A slightly more complicated example is, the function f is computable because, by the law of excluded middle, there are only two possibilities to consider. For every positive integer n, the string appears in the decimal representation of, in this case, the algorithm that always returns 1 is always correct. There is a largest integer n such that appears in the decimal representation of, in this case the following algorithm is always correct zeros in pi. If then return 0 else return 1 we have no idea which of these possibilities is correct, or what value of n is the right one in the second case. Nevertheless, one of these algorithms is guaranteed to be correct. Thus, there is an algorithm to decide whether a string of n zeros appears in, the problem is decidable. Criticisms Many modern logic systems replace the law of excluded middle with the concept of negation as failure. Instead of a proposition either being true or false, a proposition is either true or not able to be proven true. These two dichotomies only differ in logical systems that are not complete. The principle of negation as failure is used as a foundation for auto-epistemic logic, and is widely used in logic programming. In these systems, the programmer is free to assert the law of excluded middle as a true fact, but it is not built in a priori into these systems. Mathematicians such as L. E. J. Brower and Arendt Hating have also contested the usefulness of the law of excluded middle in the context of modern mathematics.